In this video, we're going to have a look at two-tail binomial hypothesis tests. Now, I've already done two videos on binomial hypothesis tests uh, for left-hand tail and for right-hand tail. So this one, I'm going to go into a little bit less detail. So I'm assuming you've watched those other two videos. If you haven't, please go and watch them. But this, this particular one is just going to focus on how to get the marks in the quickest way possible in an exam. So it says the manufacturers of a brand of chocolates claim that on average 30% of their chocolates have hard centres. In a random sample of eight chocolates from this manufacturer, five had hard centres. Test at the 5% significance level whether there's evidence that the, po uh, the population proportion of chocolates with hard centres is not 30%. Stating your hypotheses clearly. Show that the values, uh, uh, show the values of any relevant probabilities. Right, so the first thing we're going to do. And anything worth marks, I'm going to draw in red. First thing we're going to do, as I showed you in the previous tutorials, is define what we're testing in words. So P is what we're testing for. And it's the proportion of chocolates with hard centres. And that's worth a mark. It may differ from example to example, but the principle of what you need to write down is the same across all uh, across all of the exam boards. So a null hypothesis. Well, the claim is that 30% of the chocolates have hard centres. So P equals 0.3. And we're going to assume that they're true. And what we're going to try and do is find evidence to disprove this. So someone else has claimed that actually the number of chocolates with hard centres is not 30%. It doesn't, it doesn't say whether we're expecting the proportion to be bigger or smaller. So our alternate hypothesis has to be P is not equal to 0 0.3. Not greater than, not less than, but not equal to. And each of those usually worth a mark. Now, a note that I'm about to make isn't necessarily worth a mark, but I think it's necessary as a reminder to get the question right. So because now we've written P is not equal to 0 0.3, we don't know whether we're testing for a decrease or an increase, as we just discussed. So this makes it a two-tail test. And we can see that the significance level is 5%. And that significance level of 5% is split between the two tails. So I'm going to remind myself 2.5% each tail. Again, not worth a mark, but really good write down. Just to remind yourself that we're comparing any p value that we calculate, not to 5% anymore, but to 2.5%. But we'll go through that in just a second. So now, we need to know whether to test the left or the right hand tail. We want to know if the number of chocolates is increased from expectation or decreased from expectation. Well, we'd expect, and again, I'm doing this in blue because it's not worth, uh, it's not necessarily worth marks. We'd expect eight chocolates and we're told that 30% of them have hard centers. So we expect eight times 0 0.3, which is 2.4 to have hard centres. So we can see that our observed value of 5, which is here, is an increase from the expected 2.4. So now we'll test the right hand tail. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 5. And we're doing that to see how much probability is to the right of 5 equals well, 1 minus the probability x is less than or equal to 4. Let's work that out in the calculator. So x is less than or equal to 4. So binomial cumulative distribution. x less than or equal to 4. Number of trials was 8 
and the probability of success was 0 0.3. So it equals 0 0.9420 equals 0 0.9420 and 1 minus that. So 1 minus that. 1 minus answer is 0 0.0580. And that's worth a mark. So four marks so far. Next mark, compare at the significance level. So 0 0.0580. And just a little diagram here to help explain the logic behind this. So I've explained it twice in each of the other videos. But again, let's think of these, of the probability line on sliding scale. We reject the bottom 2.5% and the top 2.5%. So this is our rejection region here. There. And there. The bottom 2.5% and the top 2.5%. Overall, 5% rejection region. So expectation was 2.4, so that's bang in the middle there. And we observed 5, so we need to see whether 5 lies in the rejection region or not. So let's set this up. So there's 5 there. And we're trying to see whether 5 lies in the rejection region. Well, the probability to the right of 5, which is discovered as 0 0 0.0580, i.e. 5.8%. So 5.8%. To the right is well outside the rejection region, well outside that 2.5%. Therefore, 0 0.05 eight zero is bigger than 0 0.025. Now it's important that you compare it to the significance level at each tail and not the total significance level in a two-tail test, otherwise you lose a mark. So Finishing off, oh, by the way, that there is worth a mark. Finishing off, we're therefore going to accept H0, insufficient evidence, and do this in context to suggest that the proportion of chocolates with hard centers is less than 30%. So finish off by saying that's worth a mark there, the accept edge note and that's worth a mark there, the in-context conclusion. And don't be lazy with your conclusion. Do full sentences. Make sure that it's regurgitating the situation given in the question. So for more videos like this, go to alevelmathsrevision.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you like this video, please click like.